Hey everyone, thanks for coming to watch the Ben Jammy broadcast. 2016 was quite a year, and even though there were many bad things about it, today I want to focus on something good, and that's the great games we got this year. 2016 was a great year for games, whether you liked FPS, open world, or RPG. This isn't a review or an in-depth look or anything like that, it's just my picks for the games I liked the most in 2016. So, let's take a look at my first pick. First up on the list is Watch Dogs 2. Now, a lot of people probably didn't even play this game because of the first one and the bad reputation that it got. Because, myself included, it just disappointed so many people. Uh, it just The E3 trailer and all the other reviews that uh, we got leading up to the release were saying it was going to be a great game, and it just let everybody down. But uh, I, for one, really liked the ideas that were presented in that game. I thought it had a lot of potential. But um, the second one has just taken everything good about the first one and really improved on it. Uh, it's made everything from the uh, driving, the shooting, the hacking, just everything has been uh, just improved and made smoother. It's still not like the smoothest um, on the driving. Uh, the driving could be a little better, but at least this time around you can have fun and you just, you know, you not feel like you're uh, tethered or something when you're driving. That's how it was in the first one. It's like when you tried to turn, your whole car would just kind of like kind of grind along the pavement and you couldn't really get where you were going but in this one uh, I feel like that's really been uh, improved and made better um, and uh, not only that the uh, the character himself he's a lot more enjoyable just to be around because the first time around when we had Aiden Pierce he was just really like uh, somber and just not very much fun and his motivations were kind of stupid as well because he was trying to get revenge for something that he basically caused and he did to himself so that didn't really make a whole lot of sense, but this time around, um, the character we were given to play with, he's a lot more uh, easygoing and enjoyable. And uh, the story in this one, it's you know, it's a little bit cheesy, but I I think it's fun. And uh, bottom line on this kind of game is just uh, how much fun you're going to have with it, because I don't come to an open world you know crime game like GTA or Watch Dogs or something like that. I don't come to that for a story like what you would find in The Last of Us. So, the bottom line on these games is how much fun you're having, and Watch Dogs 2 really delivers on that, in my opinion. Next up, I want to talk about Deus Ex Mankind Divided. And this game was pretty interesting to me because it blends a lot of different gameplay styles together, and it, it uh, makes it work really well. It uh, has uh, like RPG elements and a shooter, as well as making your character upgradable and everything uh, to that extent. If you haven't played any of these before, it's basically set in a dystopian, uh, futuristic setting like that, and you're um, an augment, which means that you're a human that has uh, uh, upgrades implanted in their body, like Adam is stronger, faster, and he has um, enhanced eyesight, and just everything about him has been upgraded to, to make him a better uh, individual. And there's also weaponized upgrades that you can get for him later on down the line that make the game even more interesting. Uh, I haven't beaten it yet, but it's uh, been a fun time so far, and it, like I said, it really brings together a lot of different tactics and ways to get things done. Like, uh, for example, in one of the missions I had to do, I was tasked with going into a gangster's den and getting something out to uh, take to someone that had hired me. And the first time I played it, I went through and things just went bad, and I ended up having to shoot everybody to get the item out. But later on, I decided I would go back and try that again and uh, reloaded a different save and I upgraded Adam to have a speech implant that uh, he is able to read the facial uh, patterns of people and just pick up on the, what they like so he's able to talk through situations and after I had that upgrade I was able to go into the den and just get the item that I needed and there was no violence nobody died and so that was cool so maybe later on down the line I'll be able to go back and speak with that guy again and get a new mission just that sort of thing really uh, um, adds to the game and makes it more enjoyable because I really like the games that give you different ways to get things done and Mankind Divided really delivers on that so I would definitely recommend this to you uh, even if you haven't played the other ones in the series it uh, gives you a good like two or three minute long introduction at the beginning of the game that kind of brings you up to speed so you shouldn't have to worry about that The next game I want to talk about is Battlefield 1, and if you're into FPS games, I'm sure you've heard about this, and you may already even own it. 
But I really enjoyed this game. Uh, if you've played the Battlefield uh, in the past, the, in the rest of the series, this one will feel really familiar. It uh, keeps all the good things that uh, we've all grown to love Battlefield for, and it expands on it. It can be a little bit jarring at first when you first start the game up because it is set in World War I, so there's not as many automatic weapons. Uh, I'm using the assault kit in the gameplay here, and that's, that's probably my favorite one so far. But I, I do enjoy the, um, the guns in there because it kind of feels a little bit more even. Whereas in the previous Battlefield, uh, if you started out and you just had the, uh, the basic assault kit and somebody else had been playing for hours and hours and they had all the upgrades and everything, just made it a little bit harder for you to, to kind of get the hang of the game. Whereas in this one, uh, where everybody's a little bit more leveled out and the, the guns are all kind of the same, it's much easier to get the hang of and to uh, become, become good at it. And I've, I really enjoy it so far. Uh, the only thing that I have a problem with about it is that there's no hardcore mode, which is what I played on with Battlefield 3 and 4. Uh, so it's a little bit easier to get, get kills that way and uh, just feels a little bit more inversive. But from what I've heard, they're going to be bringing in hardcore mode uh, in the next few weeks or, or months or so. I'm not really sure when it's going to happen. But I did hear they're going to bring that in, and that's my only complaint about it so far. It's a great game, and it's a must-have if you're into FPS multiplayer games. And here we have Hitman 2016. A lot of people didn't really like the way this game was released. They did the episodic release, if you weren't familiar with it, where they just put out a new level like every month uh, for about six or seven months, I believe. And the entire first season is out now, and I believe they're going to support this game for the next couple of years with a new level. Uh, I think maybe maybe 15 new levels or so if they continue this pattern but if you can get past the episodic release and having to pay for each level separately then it's definitely a great game this is my favorite hitman game by far uh, the only one that i think was close to being this good was blood money and this is the closest thing we've gotten to that since then uh, a lot of people didn't like the way absolution was handled where it was just kind of a, a weird story and it just didn't really fit with the the way that 47 should be portrayed this one definitely fixes all those. It's definitely classic Hitman, and you get to go about the levels the way you want. They're not linear in any way. There's usually two or three targets per level, and there's a multitude of way to take down your, your task and to get your objective done. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a great game, and like I said, if you can get past the way that they released the levels, then it's it's worth experiencing. Uh, plus about that is I believe the whole um, the whole season right now is on sale on the PlayStation Store uh, while I'm making this video. I think it'll be on sale for the next few days. So if you're interested in playing this and you've been holding off because of the way they released it, now is a good time to jump in because I believe you can get the whole game for about 30 bucks. Now, I obviously couldn't make a best game of 2016 list without including Doom, because not only was this a great FPS game, it's just a great game altogether, because this just goes back to the roots of what it made just about everybody start playing games in the beginning, and that's just the sheer fun that you're going to have while you're playing it. Uh, Doom doesn't uh, try to be anything that it's not, it just tries to be a fun shooter, and that's definitely what it gets across. All you have to do in this game is just shoot and get to the next objective, and that might sound kind of repetitive and like it would get old, but the way that it's approached with the different tactics and weapons and just the, the gore and just the fun that you're having, it never gets old to just plow through like waves and waves of demons. And that is definitely what they set out to accomplish, and I think that they uh, did that in spades. If you haven't played this before, uh, this is a great game. I would definitely recommend this. And also, you don't have to know anything about the Doom games in the past because this one will catch you up with it. I think it's a reboot, actually. It doesn't uh, connect with the other games. So if you have played them, you're already going to know what's going on. And even if you haven't, then you're going to know the basic gist of it within the first 30 seconds of the game. So I would pick this up if I, if I were you and you haven't played it before. Now, Bioshock might be an older game, and it's a remaster, so it's technically not like a new entry into the 2006 lineup, 
but this is definitely worth putting on there just for the sheer fact of uh, how great all of these games are and you get all three in the remastered collection if you didn't know you get Bioshock 1, 2, and Infinite uh, I'm currently playing through the first one I tried to play it back when I had a 360 and uh, even at that point the game just looked really old and it just wasn't very much fun to play because of the graphics and the gameplay it just wasn't up to par with the way it, the way it is now but uh, coming back to it after they've remastered it and they've redone the gameplay it just feels a lot better um, it's not you know it's not definitely not going to be as smooth as something that just came out now such as you know, Battlefield 1 or another first person shooter like Doom but it's a lot more enjoyable and they've made the graphics way way better so even if you have played it before it's definitely worth experiencing again just to just to kind of go back and enjoy that world because these games really are interesting and they have a lot to bring to the table not just because of the gameplay but the stories are, are really fascinating I would recommend this even if you have played it before The last game on the list is Skyrim Remastered. I know it's kind of bad to have two remastered games right there at the end, but this, I just couldn't make this list without putting it on there because Skyrim is just going to be my all-time, one of my all-time favorite games uh, from now through eternity because there's just so many things to explore and discover and so many ways to play this game that it's just awesome to be able to go back and to experience it again especially now that it's been uh, remastered and the graphics look better and the gameplay has been enhanced a little bit as well as the addition of mods now uh, I've never played on PC I'm just not good enough with computers to be able to get all that stuff down but it's really cool to be able to, to play with mods I know everybody's that's on PC has been experiencing that uh, you know since it released in 2011 if they had it on PC but now that it's on PS4 and uh, you know, people that aren't as good with computers can experience it. It's really kind of opened up a whole new world of ways to uh, experience this game, and that alone is uh, almost just made me want to buy it uh, by itself. Just being able to experience the mods and going back and playing this game, it's really aged well. Um, you know, there's not a whole lot of complaints I have about it. It's it uh, controls well, and there's, like I said, there's tons of things to do and ways to play this. So I just couldn't make this list without putting it on there. But anyway, guys, that's going to wrap up my video for the top picks of 2016, in my opinion. Uh, if you didn't see something on here that you really enjoyed, why don't you put it in the comments and uh, let me know what you liked about 2016, what your favorite games were. And also, if you liked these games that I mentioned, uh, let me know what uh, your favorite part of those were. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Sorry, uh, the editing and the audio is a little bit, uh, but I'm still getting used to all the uh, the tools on on the uh, the PlayStation and the editing software and everything like that. So stick with me, and I'm sure the videos will get better. Anyway, thanks for stopping by.